What's up everyone? In this issue of What The Fast, we're going to be explaining manual gearboxes. Now there's plenty of different gearboxes on the market. You've got automatic, you've got manualized automatic, you've got dual clutches, but what we're gonna be talking about is a manual gearbox where you operate the clutch pedal with your left foot. Now there's four basic ways to break down the different types of manual gearboxes. You've got the shift pattern, which can either be H pattern or sequential. Uh, you've got the gear type, which can either be helical or straight cut. You've got the engagement type, which can be dog engagement or synchro, and then you've got the ratio. So how many gears you've got or how the ratios are stacked. Now we could talk for days about the different types of construction, setup and layout, but essentially what we're gonna do is go through and explain the four different parts of that, of the manual gearbox, and quickly talk about the pros and cons of each. Now when it comes to shift pattern, there's obviously H pattern and sequential. Now you'll notice that with factory cars, they're pretty much always H pattern. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, you can always tell what gear you're in just based on where the gear lever sits. Uh, secondly, you can pop it into neutral very easily at any time. Uh, and one of the best things about it is you can skip gear. So you can be cruising on the freeway and drop back a few gears in one go. Uh, or the other direction, you can skip some gears so that you can get the revs down to keep cruising. Now, a sequentially shifted transmission, generally speaking, can't go straight into neutral. So you can only go through the gears one at a time. Uh, that doesn't really have any cons on the racetrack, but on the drag strip or the dyno, you'll find that some people, when they finish a run, they pop the car into neutral to take all the load off the engine. Now, with a sequential transmission, uh, if you're in fifth gear across the line or at the end of a dyno run, put your foot on the clutch and go through all the gears back to neutral. The back wheels are still attached to the gears, and you can imagine the huge RPM in first gear when you're doing 200 k's an hour trying to get back to neutral and it can cause some serious damage. So that's really one of the only cons of a sequential transmission. Uh, but what are the pros? Well, firstly, the shift direction is more natural. So as you're slowing down or accelerating, the G-forces are acting in the same direction. Uh, secondly, a sequential transmission generally has a gear lever uh, that is designed differently to have a very short, sharp and crisp throw. So it makes gear changes easier. They'll often have a taller gear lever to bring it closer to the steering wheel. Uh, and one of the best things about a sequential transmission is most of them are available with some type of strain gauge gear lever, which allows you to have a flat shift system in the car. Now this PPG has what's called a closed loop flat shift system. So when you pull on the lever, a certain amount of strain gets detected, uh, has a signal that goes to the ECU to say cut ignition, which obviously cuts the power. Uh, and then there is a rotary position sensor inside the gearbox that determines when you're in the next gear, sends a signal back to the ECU to say, okay, give me my power back. So these flat shift systems enable you to not have to lift the throttle on gear changes, which are pretty cool. However, if you have a sequential that isn't dog engagement, uh, that won't work. So it's all part of a complete system. So H pattern versus sequential, shift direction is what determines it. So next up is the type of engagement, and you can have two types, dog engagement or synchronizer rings, or synchros, which you see in every factory gearbox. Now you hear the phrase dog box get thrown around a lot, and a lot of time it's done incorrectly. When people hear a noisy gearbox that whines as it drives, they go, oh look, that has a dog box. But that's actually the cut of the gears causing the whine. The sound that you hear on the gear change, or when you clunk it into first, that is the dog engagement. So what are the pros and cons of each? Well, I'm sure you can work out that if every car from factory has synchros, there's advantages to having them in a road car. Basically a synchro, uh, as the two gears go to try and change, as the synchros are pushed against each other, they cause friction, which causes one gear to speed up or one gear to slow down, so that the speeds match and then the gears can interlock with each other. Uh, that means that a normal person can drive them very easily, uh, you can obviously go from first to second, you can go from second to fourth, it doesn't matter. The synchros will try and do the work. Makes for a smooth, easy car to drive. However, there are some disadvantages. One is the time taken to change gears. Because the synchros aren't allowing you to get into gear until the revs match between the gears, 
Obviously a synchro gearbox, it takes longer to change gears. When you've got more power or more RPM, you often find that the synchros just can't manage it and you'll miss a gear or it won't go into gear, etc. Uh, we've all encountered this in performance cars that we've modified. Uh, and synchros wear out too. So if you've got a lot of power, uh, high RPM, and you're trying to shift gears a lot, uh, you'll often find that you'll wear the synchros out. We had a Jetrag six-speed in our GTR. Uh, it's probably one of the better synchronizer gearboxes on the market, but we were just limited in how physically how fast we could change gears. So that's why people go to this, dog engagement. So these little dog teeth that are on the gear basically means that when it goes to interlock with another gear, they're forced to do it. They've got no choice. They are literally going to interlock. There is the rare occasion where if you try to change gears too slowly, the dogs will hit each other and bounce back out of gear. But as long as you give a nice, sharp, crisp gear change, you'll find that they'll pretty much go in any time and very quickly. The interlocking dogs just grab hold of each other and in they go. Now the pros and cons to this, obviously, we'll talk about the cons first, and that is uh, because it will go in any time, anywhere, you can miss gears. You've heard of people going first, second, back to first and exploding an engine by over revving it. So you have to be careful about how you drive it and make sure you're in the correct gear. Dogs can wear out quicker than synchros if you don't know what you're doing. Um, PPG have told us that they've seen street cars outlive their engines, do 30, 40,000 Ks when driven correctly. But obviously when you're racing, they'll wear out quicker. So there is, it is a serviceable item. Uh, that will probably need to be serviced more than what you would in a standard synchro box, but at least it will survive a lot more. So you'll generally find that the gearbox will probably still outlast your engine anyway. So what are the advantages? Well, the first one is the speed of the shift. They interlock almost instantly. So um, you can pretty much shift as fast as your gear lever will allow you. Now, faster shifts means obviously more time accelerating for better performance, uh, and obviously means that you won't drop off boost as much between gear changes in a turbo car. And the other advantage of a dog box is not just the speed of the shift, uh, but also the fact you can do clutchless shifting. Now, the way that works is you can either do it with your foot or you can do it with the flat shift on a sequential. Basically, the dogs are locked in. Um, if you want to change gears with no clutch, you have to lift the throttle slightly. That'll unload the dogs from each other, allowing you to get it out of gear, pull to the next gear, and it'll go straight in. You'll see us do that in our R32 GDR right now. So, dog versus synchro, basically dog engagement, faster gear changes, can get into gear, any gear, almost any time, uh, basically better performance by having faster gear changes and you don't need to use the clutch to change gears, which means you can keep the thing on boost and in some applications even get it on the boost lower in the rev range. If you short shift from say 5 grand down to 4 and you normally don't have boost at 4 grand, because you are already on boost, when you flat shift into the next gear you can actually keep boost going at lower RPM which can help you on the circuit quite a lot. Now the next thing to talk about is the gear type or how it's cut and there is two types, helical and straight cut. Basically straight cut is exactly that, the gear is dead straight and the entire face of the gear touches the other gear when they join up. Um, but the good thing about a straight cut gear is if you have a very small gearbox casing to fit it in, you can have a stronger gear that's narrower compared to a helical cut gear. Uh, the problem with straight cut gears though is they're incredibly noisy. Now if you're in a race car, that's fine. You've heard the inside of a V8 supercar, they wind their head off. In a street car, it gets very old very quickly. Factory gears are helical cut, which are much quieter. However, the angle of the helical cut and how aggressive it is determines how quiet or loud it is. The PPG box is helical cut, which is good for the street. However, you still do hear some gearbox whine because obviously it's not cut as softly as a factory or helical gear is. So it's still got some noise, but just not as noisy as a straight cut. So. Pros and cons, straight cut are incredibly noisy and not suitable for the street. However, they can be stronger for something that's the same width, while helical, good for the street and it quietens it down. Now the last thing to talk about is ratios or how many gears the gearbox has. Uh, you'll generally find that a factory gearbox is five or six speed. Uh, a lot of gear sets you find in the aftermarket industry are five speed gear sets. And you'll find sequentials are often six speed. There are still some four speed gearboxes out there. Uh, generally aftermarket performance gearboxes 
Uh, you know, different types of dog boxes might be four speed, but basically they just don't have an overdrive. So fourth is still one to one. Uh, I think ratios are one of the most misunderstood but most important parts of modifying your car. Getting the ratios correct can totally change the way the car drives. We use the Mines R34 GTR as an example. Response weapon, what's its secret? What was diff ratios actually to suit the six speed gearbox in it? Using our R32 GTR as an example, we switched from five speed to six speed. The five speed had very, very long gears, which made the car pretty dopey down low. Uh, it was also dropped off boost between gear changes. And having gear sets that are too long, just like our time attack car used to have, means that often at the racetrack, you'll find yourself at the wrong RPM in the middle of the corner and you just don't have the right gear for it. So switching gearboxes to have more ratios or closer ratios can give the car better response, can make sure it's at the right RPM at the right time on the corner, stop it dropping off boost between gear changes, heaps of advantages to changing gear and diff ratios. Uh, you'll find that when you buy an aftermarket gear set, they usually match what came out of it. So a five speed dog engagement gear set going into a WRX or a, into a Skyline is the same amount of gears. But when you buy a sequential, you'll often find that you get six speed. Uh, what's so good about that? Well, fifth is still generally one to one. You, so you have an extra gear uh, from first all the way through till you've got one to one. Uh, and how they're stacked is also important. So for example, the Jet Track had pretty evenly stacked gears from first all the way through to fifth but you'll find a dedicated racing gearbox or a sequential gearbox such as the PPG, what they'll do is they'll have a longer first so that the rest of the gears, second, third, fourth, fifth, can be much closer stacked. So instead of evenly stacked, they'll have a long first and the rest are closer stacked. Why is that? Well, you use first gear to get moving and generally the car has no problem making power and boost in first gear compared to the higher gears. Uh, and often at a racetrack, well, you don't go back to first. So first is used to get you moving and then the rest of the gears are closely stacked, which is what you want for optimum performance in pretty much any modified race, drag or street car. Uh, what else is there to talk about? The last thing with manual gearboxes to look at is whether or not it's a gear set or whether or not it's a complete aftermarket gearbox. So if you buy, say, a Samsonis or an Albans rear-wheel drive gearbox, you'll find that that's a racing dedicated gearbox, self-contained, and you have to buy a bell housing to suit. You've obviously got to custom make a, a gearbox cross member and tail shaft, etc. And on the other side of the spectrum, you've got gear sets. So What's common is you see that PPG make a gear set to go inside WRX or RB25 gearboxes. So you buy the gear set and put it inside the factory casing. The PPG six-speed sequential is uh, pretty special in the fact that it's actually a gear set inside the standard gearbox. What's the pros and cons of each? Well, a dedicated racing gearbox doesn't have any limitations placed on it from factory in terms of size and space. They, they go and make exactly what they want and then you make that fit your car. On the other side, if you put a gear set inside the factory casing, it will bolt straight back into your car. You're not making bell housings, cross members, tail shafts, etc. So for ease of use, it's much better. And you generally find there's pretty good support for them as well in terms of getting them fixed. So all up, I hope you've learned something about manual gearboxes. That explains it. Uh, we'll be doing some more stuff in the future that goes into further detail. But at least now, when you want to explain a gearbox, you know what to do. So for example, this is a six-speed sequentially shifted dog engagement, helical cut transmission.